Hey guys, I hope you're doing great. Welcome back to another video. I've been working on the second generation of lithophanes, you know, 2D flat images, that's just so 2017. 2018, that's spherical lithophanes, and I figured I would show you how to do it in the software. I was introduced to this software just a couple of weeks ago, so if there's something I don't do by the book, you know, for all the pros out there, just show me some mercy, but you can go ahead and download the free trial. Uh, oh yeah, if you don't know what a lithophane is, I'll cover it more in detail in this video, so I'm not gonna cover it here. So let's get started with, with my brief instruction of how to generate the lithophane effect on a sphere in 3ds max okay let's start off by creating a sphere and obviously this is going to depend on how big you want your sphere and phys physical object to be but i'm going to do 140 millimeters so that's going to cover almost the entire build plate of the cr10 and you want to do about 200 segments now go to sphere number one over here and uh, do a copy okay i'm messing up here i don't know why there we go clone and do a copy of that one so now we have two spheres and you want to do sphere number one that's going to be 140.8 millimeters and that's going to be your minimal thickness so if you have it uh, if you have an extrusion width of 0.4 that's going to be two perimeters now go to modifier list on the sphere number one you have sphere number one selected now go to modifier list and go to normal over here and do flip normals oh shit Kids trying to sneak up on me, eh? Now let's select sphere number two and uh, go to modifier list and add a subdivide, uh, subdivide modifier and uh, do like a pretty small amount. Well, you want the size to be like two millimeters, so that's gonna add a lot of detail. And also go to modifier list and do a t turbo smooth and uh, iterations do like two. Now for the fun part, let's go to modifier list and add a displacement uh, called displace. And you have a couple of options you can change. So strength is basically how dark you want your darker parts on the lithophane to be. And if you if you do like three millimeters, that's what I did. And, uh, and I found great success with only three millimeters. If you do a smaller globe, Definitely bump that up to maybe like six eight millimeters. That's gonna add some printing time and and more plastic But it's gonna make the darker parts darker So it makes the contrast better and it will look it will look a lot better than just having three millimeters But doing a huge globe that I'm doing right now adding uh, Having a very high number of, of strength is gonna add a whole lot of printing time You know, we're talking like 200 hours, so it's not really a good solution so I'm just gonna do three millimeters uh, now go to bitmap and choose your image and uh, I have it here I'm probably gonna upload the entire SDL file on Thingiverse and uh, and the picture in the description below uh, but basically what I did is I searched for a spherical world map and I made it black and white and I inverted the colors what this means is that since the oceans are white in these pictures they are gonna become more dark in uh, in the physical globe in the lithophane effect when you hold it in your hand with the light source in it that's going to become darker so i've chosen the the oceans to be completely dark as dark as they can be and uh well look at the sahara desert it's going to become very white as well as the greenland you know ice that's going to become very white as well it's going to be minimal amount of displacement um, and that's how you do it. So I'm just gonna choose the image in here. I don't feel like that explanation was very good. Hopefully it makes some sense. Uh, what you wanna do is uh, click spherical on the map over here. Just go to uh, sphere number two and hold control and click on sphere number one. So you select both of them and uh, right click on one of the uh, globes and go to convert and go convert it to an editable poly. Now just select the sphere number two and go to attach and you're gonna click on sphere number one so it's just gonna become one sphere now just go to export and uh, export it as an SDL and I'm gonna put it on the desktop and just uh, call it you know done uh, well here comes the part to see if you messed up or not so let's import it in our slicing software I'm using simplify 3d and uh Okay, so I just chopped the bottom off and added the supports. 
uh, because I'm not sure, I'm not too sure of how well it's gonna cope with the very top of the print. That's gonna be really difficult. I, I'm not sure if that's gonna be enough. Uh, but as you can see where the ocean is, so I was talking about before with the strength and the displacement modifier, if your strength is more than three millimeters, this part is gonna be thicker. So if you have six millimeters, that's gonna be double the thickness basically. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind, and that's what I'm talking about. It's gonna, be, it's just gonna add a bunch of printing time and and a lot of plastic. 87 hours, 87 hours. That's gonna be, you know, as long as Simplify 3D don't joke with us, that's gonna be around 100 hours. But man, if this turns out to be a successful print, this is gonna be lit. All right, let's do it. Oh, no, I had to move the GoPro because it didn't have the globe in the picture So I moved it over here to this high quality mount and I managed to bump the entire table So it made this this visible line all around the entire globe We'll just call that the equator Man, almost 100 hours, 98 hours, something like that to print this. Okay, I wanna see how much this weighs. Seven, this is 700 grams of white PLA awesomeness. I mean, look at this, we have the world map on a 3D printed globe, I mean, I have this huge pillar of supports going from the bottom to the very top of the globe, and as you can see on the top, you can kinda of see through uh, spaces where it's really thin. And, um, and now we have to remove this huge pillar of supports without breaking it, which that's going to be really difficult since the uh, very top has been compromised. Okay, I'm going to put on a GoPro so you can see when I fail. Whoa, okay, it cracked. Okay, okay, okay. Oh wow, that's kind of an interesting pattern. And for anyone wondering, it's 211 grams of support structure. Now, how are we gonna fix this? You know, I don't know if it was even totally necessary to print the very top of the globe again. You know, I used the polymorph to kind of seal in the cracks for the bold spot, but at least the top of the globe is fixed. But for future reference, I would probably skip the support material entirely because that's like, because that's like one third your print anyways. Because if you are going to print a sphere the size of two footballs, you know, you're never gonna get good results on the very top. So I would just on purpose leave a hole and then print like a black dome or something and just put on as a hat just to cover that bald spot. I think that would look, uh, that's gonna save you a lot of time and it will look better than, than what I have here. Yeah, you remember the feeling when you got your exam back and you were about to check if you got an F or an A? About the same feeling. No, I am super excited. I just want to see how this looks. Uh, I made this super simple uh, 3D printed mount, you know, just to hold the globe in place. You know, the scary part is that I still don't know if this turned out okay. So I will be experiencing this with you guys. I will see this lit, you know, getting the exam back for the first time with you guys. So um, let's do the big reveal. This is the world map. Lithophane spherical map reveal coming up now.
<laughs> Dude, I couldn't be happier. This looks sick. 10 out of 10. Absolutely 10 out of 10. I mean, just look at this baby. Let me know in the comments down below, where are you from? I know there's a lot of people in Indonesia watching, some in India. We have a lot of people in Germany, uh, Great Britain, uh, not so many in Africa, Sweden. I live up here. And obviously a lot of people are also from the United States, South America. Again, let me know in the comments where are you from and let me know what you think about this lithophane globe. Big thank you to this guy Ethan, he's the guy behind the lithophane moon lamp, you have probably seen it on Thingiverse. He made me understand, he showed me everything in the 3ds Max software and how to generate the lithophane effect. So I will leave his, all, all the information down below if you want to check out his work. And uh, thank you very much for watching, I hope I will see you again very soon. Have an awesome day, bye.